by now, cyberspace had become even more sophisticated and responsive to human interaction. The online world was full of algorithms that could analyze and predict human behavior. The man behind much of this was a scientist called Judea Pearl. He was the godfather of modern artificial intelligence. Pearl's breakthrough had been to use what were called Bayesian belief networks. They were systems that could predict behavior even when the information was incomplete. But to make the system work, Pearl and others had imported a model of human beings drawn from economics. They created what were called rational agents, software that mimicked human beings, but in a very simplified form. The model assumed that the agent would always act rationally in order to get what it wanted, nothing more. One of the early utopians of cyberspace, Jaron Lanier, warned of the implications of this. The agent's model of what you are interested in will always be a cartoon model. And in return, you will see a cartoon version of the world through the agent's eyes. And, he added, it will never be clear who they are working for. You or someone else. New technology began to allow people to upload millions of images and videos into cyberspace. And the web, which up to that point had seemed like an abstract other world, began to look and feel like the real world. From videos of animals, personal moments of experience, extraordinary events, to horrific terror videos, more and more was uploaded. This was a new world that the old systems of power found it very difficult to deal with. In the wake of the 9-11 attacks, the security agencies secretly collected data from millions of people online. One program was called Optic Nerve. It took stills from the webcam conversations of millions of people across the world, trying to spot terrorists planning another attack. The program did not discover a single terrorist but it did discover something else. A top secret assessment said, unfortunately, there are issues with undesirable images within the data. It would appear that a surprising number of people are using webcam conversations to show intimate parts of their body to the other person. Also, the fact that the software allows more than one person to view a webcam stream means that it appears to be being used to broadcast pornography. But increasingly, people were using the internet in other ways, to present themselves as they wanted to be seen. I guess a video blog is about me. I don't really want to tell you where I live because you could like, stalk me. The web drew people in because it was mesmerizing. It was somewhere that you could explore and get lost in, in any way you wanted. But behind the screen, like in a two-way mirror, the simplified agents were watching and predicting and guiding your hand on the mouse. My name is Sweetie. The men ask me to take off my clothes. They undress. They play with themselves. But what they don't know, I'm not real. I'm a computer model made piece by piece to track down these men who do this. As the intelligence systems online gathered ever more data, new forms of guidance began to emerge. 
Social media created filters, complex algorithms that looked at what individuals liked and then fed more of the same back to them. In the process, individuals began to move, without noticing, into bubbles that isolated them from enormous amounts of other information. They only heard and saw what they liked. And the news feeds increasingly excluded anything that might challenge people's pre-existing beliefs. The version of cyberspace that was rising up seemed to be very much like William Gibson's original vision that behind the superficial freedoms of the web were a few giant corporations with opaque systems that controlled what people saw and shaped what they thought. And what was even more mysterious was how they made their decisions about what you should like and what should be hidden from you.